So talk about what you see as Deutsche Telekom's role in this moment going forward. I know you have some real urgent issues you want to talk about about 2017 too, so take it away. Look, the first thing, I think we all share that we are in a kind of inflection point where things are changing quite rapidly. And we have a society which is changing as well, rapidly. I think we have 20 to 25 per percent of our society which are living in a kind of precarious situation. Precarious in the way that they fear digitalization and the impact that they are, you know, falling behind, that they are not in the position to, hand to handle issues. People who fear that, you know, their job is not there for a lifetime. In the history we had at Deutsche Telekom people working 50 years. I every week sign documents where I congratulate people for being 50 years with the company. The new world is not that people could stay 50 years with the company anymore. So now we could say and say, oh, we don't like the election results which we have recently seen, or we as leaders, we are trying to bring these people into the discussion, in, up to speed in their qualification, create that same environment that they understand the opportunities, but even the threats which are, and that we have an open and honest and clear dialogue. We have a president who coming in office on Friday or Saturday, whenever it is, disturbingly soon. <laughs> um, and he basically says that jobs are going away because companies are being anti-patriotic and shipping them overseas, whereas the data shows that in fact 88% of manufacturing jobs in the United States have been lost because of automation, not because of outsourcing and globalization. I think I like three words here. The first one is wake up call, the second one is uh, opportunity, and the third one is uh, development. So our report, I think, is, is all about wake-up call, yeah? to really you know, have the awareness that something is going to happen. Yeah? There are still too many people denying that this will have an implication uh, or an impact on companies, on society, and on governments, on economic, uh, economies, and so on. So it will have an impact. It's not being a disaster. Yeah, it's something what has happened in the past already a couple of times. So just look back in the movement from agriculture society to a more industrial society. So if you look into the numbers in the US, in 1900, 40% of all people employed were working in, in agriculture. Now it's only 2%. So do we have a huge unemployment? No, people move from agriculture to industrial ages. I think it's a big mistake to compare this revolution we're going through, which I think of as a new renaissance, to previous industrial revolutions and to, for example, the movement out of agriculture. That took place over a hundred year period and some countries in the world still haven't reached it. Um, that is a very slow evolutionary process that was very uneven and very, very slow to trickle around the world. We are talking about a revolution that's going to take place over a 20, 30 year period globally. How do we manage the transformation of society from A to B in the best yeah. way to mitigate, mm -hmm. let's say, the precarious situations for people in the societies? For truck drivers and others, you know, in autonomous drivings, for, you know, the simple process administrators who might, let's say, be being compensated by, by AI mm -hmm. and by bots. What is important for us, if we go into this direction and talk about artificial intelligence, we have to discuss what that means for the truth, how Facebook is a media company or is not, what's about Twitter? I like the discussion about this fake news um, uh, and how to Germany is wanting to react with legal enforcement now um, in Germany. At least there's a political debate. I just read it this morning in the newspaper. So there's something is happening. We have now the, the example from other countries. So we, we, we're going to react on that one. I'm more worried about we are all living in a bubble mm. and we're living in our, in our personal bubbles. You know, we got exactly the recommendation which we are creating. You know, it is always, you know, a kind of mono, monoculture which is created around us. We're in silos, we're in echo chambers. Uh, there was, you know, as, as Julian Savalesco, my Oxford philosopher friend, the second speaker this morning, highlighted, in addition to the political debates on digitalization, those on, for example, genetic modification uh, are as vital. The one key question about these, though, is that we've got to think about different politics. These decisions will not be made in Berlin or in Brussels. They are made 
across borders.